Hi, I'm Patrick Bailey with iqlist.com. Today is July 23rd, 2018. And in this video, I'm going to print a topographical, topographical map <laughs> topographical map on its side. Okay, recently I put a video out there called 3D Printing, Printing Topographical Maps, where I found two different tools. One called Terranator, that's a paid app, paid web, paid web app. And the other one, just a free web app, where you could actually create an STL file from a given terrain on a map. And I went and found, I went and made a couple of maps of the Tetons, the Grand Tetons, and I printed them out and compared them and got some interesting results. I was pretty happy with both of them. Um, but then I had someone comment here, 3D Gustner. He said, thanks for the links. You should check out 3DP Iceland YouTube channel. He prints a lot of topographical maps. He prints them on the side to get the most resolution as possible. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So I went and checked out his channel and I'll put a link here to the... Uh, He's got a bunch of videos, but this is the link, at least the first video I found where he talked about printing out different styles. So he printed out one similar to how I printed out, which gets you an interesting look because if you look at it down in detail, and you can go look at my other video to see some of the details, it kind of has an interesting topographical map look. But according to him, if you want something more precise, if you print it on its side, you'll get a better you'll get a better mountain range, you'll get a better terrain, they'll follow it, and you won't get all these lines, not nearly as bad. So I thought that was interesting. So I'm gonna go take this same print, flip it on its side, and go print it out. Okay, so the two maps, the free and the paid, the free one actually had a thicker base, so I'm gonna actually just use that. Now, of course, there's ways where you can make the base thicker, but I'm just gonna go for ease of use right now. And this one I originally was a little bit big, so I changed it to 75%. I'm going to make the same exact size. But now I need to flip it up on its side. So let me, let's see, flip it on the Y axis, 90 degrees. Let's try that. There we go. And then I think I will flip it on the Z a little bit. No, no, no. Hey. 20, 20, there we go, about, I don't know, 200, not that way, I don't know if that'll actually, well, will you fit at 180, or 270, 270, there we go, all right, so there it is, uh, I'm going to put a brim on it, do standard infill, Ah, well, the last one I printed at 0.15, if I remember correctly, so I'll, I'll leave this at 0.15, so we'll see what the details are. But it makes sense why it would print the mountain range more detailed, because that is the outside curve. Um, so let me just generate this and go get it printed out. Okay, there we go. And got the brim there. It looks, looks good. Hopefully it'll work. So let me go save this G-code off and see how well it does. Let's see. Grand Tetons, Grand Tetons. Three Grand Tetons. Three on side. Now based on his experiments, I'm thinking this is gonna do really well, but I wanna see it for myself. Okay, well, print it out. And here it is. I'll get some more detailed shots here in a second. Right, let me get a let me get the sunlight off there. There we go. There we go. Better. Um, let me first go over the uh, over the numbers. So it took 17 hours and nine minutes to print. It took 0.139 cent electricity, and it weighs 0.236 kilograms. And based on $20 for a kilogram of roll, kilogram roll, that's $4.72 just for the film alone. So altogether, $4.86. So, you know, about the same price um, as doing it not on its side. But it did take five hours longer to get done on its side. Now, I did have some issues when I was printing it normally. I was printing it slower, and I kind of did a calculation to compensate for that. So I might be off on that five-hour number. We'll see. Um, but it did print differently. It was interesting. Now, I'll do some flybys here. So I'll do a flyby of the original. Well... I shouldn't say the original. The, the flyby of the, uh, on, when I printed it on, on a flat surface. And so 
you may still want this because I personally I do kind of like the look of it because the effect and the the terrain the way that you had the topographical thing on it I kind of like that look but if you're gonna paint it um, then yeah you probably want something more accurate and I think looking at looking at what we what I've done and so I have the fly over here on the um, the one where I print on its side it is more accurate and when I say more accurate, I mean it's more accurate to what the original 3D design was. Now, if you uh, look at it, if you look at here, I've got it pulled up here in the Prusa control. And you can see, you may have to go back and forth on this. Maybe I'll try to do some screen overlays here. I'm not quite certain. But the original 3D STL file is a little blocky. And I think that is actually coming through on the print. So I think it's actually more representative of what it actually looks like. So I think if I had a better detailed print, it would probably actually come out better. So on its side, I think it's a better job. Now, having now I've seen some other videos where people are doing terrains, I would think the way to go is, I need to go look up exactly what they're doing, but most of them seem to be using some kind of software where they're pulling information in and getting more accurate maps. So I think there's probably better ways to get more accurate maps um, the, the tools I use, if you want to do something quick and dirty, I think those web tools work great. I think there's some other tools that I have yet to learn. Um, in fact, you might want to go look at, uh, ah, I should put his name up here. Da, da, da. The 3D printing guy. <laughs> I didn't put his name up here, did I? Ah, anyway. The, uh, the oh, there you go. 3DP Iceland. Go look 3DP Iceland because he's doing it. He probably knows what software's out there. I just haven't had the time yet to go look. But I think if you're going to want a more accurate representation of the map, I think you need to do two things. Get better software so you have a better map to begin with. And then, yeah, he's right. Printing on your side, I, well, I think he's right. Because this print that I just printed out looks a lot more like the 3D design I'm seeing, uh, the STL file. So I think... I think I have another experiment I need to do in my future. I don't know when I'll get to it, but I think I, what I want to do is go figure out how what these guys are doing to make more accurate maps and then probably do another video printing on the side versus printing up. So I think what it comes down to, better tool, go get, go get a better tool to get a better map if that's what you really want. Um, then you got to decide, do you want the stylized with the terrain, you know, the, the terraces going up, which I kind of like that. Or do you want something more accurate? And if you're going to paint it, you probably want something more accurate. So, cool. That was a good suggestion. Um, interesting to go look all that up and learn. I learned a lot more. So, it's interesting to know that printing on its side, and it makes sense that printing things, printing maps on their side, actually gets you a much more, well, how can I say that? I think it gets you a much more accurate map. It's definitely getting a much more accurate, rep uh, accurate representation to what I actually downloaded. So now I need to go do a, another experiment in a few weeks or a few months to start with a better map to begin with. But anyway, so cool. Learned a few things. More to learn. <laughs> anyway. Hey, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we were doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.